morning everybody, Ferranini here and welcome back to Do Not Take This Cat Home. Now this is going to be the grand finale to this, hopefully, and hopefully we'll be able to figure out what is this whole entire venture, what is our deal with this cat. Anyways, let's go ahead, get back into it. Last playthrough, we did every option that involved taking the cat home. This time, we're gonna go ahead and do not take the cat home like the title entails and see what happens there. Ooh, okay, so last time I went to the dog park. Let's go to a movie. It's been a while since a film came out that looked interesting enough for you to drag yourself to a movie theater, but there's a showing of one such film at the old theater. The movie was a little too neat to be picked up by the new cinema that opened right across the street. That's okay though. You're not exactly a fan of the crowds and nothing ruins the experience of watching a new movie for you more than a noisy audience. Sometimes it adds to experience, not gonna lie, guys. Anyways, let's go to the old movie theater. You eagerly buy your ticket from the kind old man in the booth and head inside. It's barren of any trace of other people and the decor looks like it hasn't changed since the 80s, maybe even the 70s, but it's what you were counting on. You consider buying some popcorn, but can't help but be concerned that everything at the concession stand might be expired. Probably is, not gonna lie, guys. You you move on and walk through the halls, finally locating the theater designed on your ticket stub. As expected, the theater your movie will be playing in is completely empty. Perfect! You pick a spot right in the middle, even counting the seats and taking into consideration the gap of the staircase. As you settle in, the dim lights fade away, leaving the room pitch black for a few seconds. Dot 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 before the screen flickers on. Nice. No commercials or trailers pops up. The movie just begins. That's what I'm talking about. Please, you shrug and let yourself get immersed in the opening scenes. But just as you're getting into the premise, the doors open behind you, momentarily casting light into the room and ruining the atmosphere. Who's coming in the movie midway through? Who's doing that? You hold in a frustrated sigh. It's a public establishment after all. It's not just for me. The place can't exactly afford to stay open if you're the only customer. You try to refocus on the movie, but you sense the new presence slowly shifting around the theater. Just take a seat already! Before heading in your general direction. Dot, dot, dot. What? Oh! They just to sit in front of me?! I'm baffled. You gape in utter disbelief as the stranger shuffles down the aisle only to sit right in front of you. There's no one else here and plenty of places to sit. The stranger is also unusually tall. Even though the stadium-like arrangement of the seats being on a somewhat steep incline, you're completely blocking, or they're completely blocking your view. I'm just gonna move to another spot. That's actually what I would do if I was in this situation. Just move over. You don't want to risk escalating the situation further. This whole thing is already making you uneasy. Why would they choose to sit right in front of you? Surely they know you wouldn't be able to see past them. Shaking your head with the <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Shake your head with a passive aggressive scoff in the stranger's direction. You reluctantly pick another less perfect seat in the theater. But as you settle down, you see the stranger get <gasps> Don't tell me. Oh my, that would get me so mad. Only to once again sit down in the seat directly in front of you. You look around somewhat helplessly as if waiting for someone to silently agree with you about how odd all of this is. Like, you guys not seeing this? Or at least inform you that it's all an elaborate prank but there's no one else here with you. That's how you've always liked it, but you can't help but think that maybe it would be nice to have someone else here if it meant not being alone with this weird jerk. Move to this another spot. Is he gonna just keep moving with me? You move again. What? <gasps> And again, they sit right in front of you. <laughs> you briskle, annoyed, and a little humiliated. Are they just getting a kick out of this or something? You've wasted enough time with this jerk that you don't even know what's going on in the movie anymore. And the movie's still playing the entire time. Oh my gosh. Now we gotta confront the stranger. You can already feel your palms starting to sweat as the ideal of it. Your throat closing up and your body starting to shake. You've always been more of a fighter than a fight, or flighter than a fighter, 100%. But you paid for this ticket. You wanted. Oh my gosh, I just noticed the heartbeat. You wanted to watch this movie for ages, and now this total stranger has ruined the entire experience for you. You're all alone in this theater. There's no one who's helped you if there's something goes wrong. But you're angry enough that you ignore the signs of your body begging you to put as much distance as you can between yourself and the stranger. You stand up. Even standing, 
and higher up on the incline the stranger is still at least a head taller than you the movie continues to play in the background but you feel as if a hush immediately falls heavily over the theater at your movement as if you can sense the stranger anticipating what you plan to do next you square your shoulders and force a little bass in your voice Hey! <laughs> That's me putting some bass in my voice, guys. The effort makes your words come off as more harshly than you attended, like a sudden and vicious bark. But you figure they deserve it anyways. You're just being a real jerk, you know that? Don't put in that bass in my voice. Just what are you even playing at, huh? Are you trying to make me mad? The silence that follow your words is deafening. So much that you glance at the screen only to find that the movie has paused your attention is ripped back to the stranger in front of you as they shift slightly like a small animal trying desperately to anticipate the moves of a predator you don't move an inch you don't look away you don't dare to blink Ooh, he's turning instead your eyes wide as the person head turns oh then turn some more he doesn't have eyes oh my gosh he does it then turns more beyond what should be possible neck bones crackling to face your direction. I do not like that. You can't move. Wide glowing eyes resting above a wider grinning mouth gaze down at you. The stranger opens their mouth and when consults is something impossible to comprehend. No, you're gnawing at me. Oh, that is creepy. That is creepy. It's actually going along with the sound. He really said yeah at me though. The voice is endlessly deep and creaks like a weighty door, forbidding or foreboding and oddly melodic, alluring. But it also snaps you out of your terrifying trance and before you know it, you're already out the door. I'm out. Please, I'm out of here. You run through the halls of the empty theaters, heading for the exit. You feel something watching you from your behind, but you're too afraid to look. <laughs> the exit now is in sight. You sprint forward and bust through the doors. You look around frantically and spot the crowded cinema across the street. People, that's what you need. Safety in numbers and all that. Without thinking, you rush into the street. Not in the street. I hope I don't get hit. When a sinking sensation crawls down your spine, compelling you to look behind you. <gasps> Oh no, they crossed out don't, so that is look behind you. I kind of want to look behind me. Despite your resistance, you feel your head turning to look back at its own accord while in the middle of the street. Oh my gosh. You catch a glimpse of a grotesque looking person holding behind the glass doors of the old theater, watching you intensely, cradling something in their hands, something familiar. But... <laughs> Oh my god! Yup, 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 there I go. Yup, 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 there goes it! Truck coon right on time, guys. A glimpse is all you get as a truck speeds forward and crashes into your body. Lovely. I love it. Ending 16, poor screening arrangement. <laughs> Whoa! The title screen changed, guys. Ooh, things are getting creepy. I just got one more ending. We're going to do all the options again, but this time we're gonna try and cross the street successfully and see if there's a difference. Refusing to even risk a peek over your shoulder, you rush across the street to the new cinema theater. You didn't realize that it felt like you were been surrounded by some sort of dreadful presence, dot, 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 until it very subtly vanishes, leaving you feeling more than a little shaken. But at least breathing comes easier. You think it's within your best interest to repress everything that just happened, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, decided to wait for the movie you've been anticipating to be available on DVD or streaming. You join the long line outside the new cinema. By the time you reach the ticket booth, you just want to get inside. So you pick a movie at random and take your ticket from the tired looking teenager manning the booth. The decor is chic and sleek and the inside is bursting with people. It's not what you're usually into, but it's kind of nice not being alone. Even if you feel a little lonely watching families and groups of friends laughing among themselves, you get some popcorn, but the lines at the concession stand are long and the prices are criminal. Anyways, <laughs> you go through the halls and follow the signs to the theater designated on your ticket before heading inside. <sighs> You sigh the sight of the absolutely crowded theater. Oh my gosh. You headed towards a seat only to be told by the person next to it that is being saved. This happens a few more times before you finally manage to get yourself settled into a seat annoyingly off center to the screen. 
but the screen is at least visible, if not a little too close, so you grit your teeth and bear it. The lights fade out, but the chatter doesn't. Ah! The rest of the audience seem content to talk through the commercials, even through the trailers. You figure the chatter will stop when the movie be actually begins, but it doesn't get even slightly quieter as the opening scene starts to play out. Dang, they're really going towards my pet peeves, guys. You sigh out loud, not thinking anyone would hear you anyways. This is why you avoid movie theaters like the plague. Um, uh, hello? Suddenly the screen changes showing the face of a black cat. A familiar black cat. Confused murmurs fill the room, but then, oh, everyone's seeing this? The cat on the screen meows. The sound is strange and not at all like any cat should sound. Haunting, almost melodic. And layered as if made of multiple voices of different creatures. Creatures that would probably never say, <laughs> they're still going. Oh my god. So everyone is seeing this, right? It's not just me this time. That's good to know. Dot, dot, dot. You sit in confusion wondering why you haven't already gotten up and left to complain to the cinema staff. But then you hear it. It's scattered and dissonate at first, but amongst the crowd, people start to chant along with the cat on the screen. Soon the entire room is chanting in perfect unison. Everyone's staring intently at the cat on the screen. That is, oh my God. You're feeling strangely drawn to the screen yourself. I, I guess I'm gonna join too. I feel like I'm gonna join. Peer pressure and society norms and all that stuff. But the compulsion to stare blankly like the others isn't that strong for now. Also, you start to notice out of the corner of your eye that some of the people in your immediate vicinity are looking at you. <gasps> no. Oh! They're outright staring holes into you, even as they continue chanting. They don't miss a beat as they slowly begin to frown at you in blunt and disapproval. Their scowls deepen as time goes on as if they're getting impatient. You want me to join in? Is that what- They want me to join in! Trying to blend in with the crowd! <laughs> Thinking fast, you look to the screen and begin to chant in tandem with the crowd. Yeah. 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 You feel the harshness of their collective gaze start to ebb away. The air in the theater becomes lighter once again. Yeah, everyone, come together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you release air shakily, just realizing that you've been holding your breath earlier. Dot, dot, dot. You feel stuck. Surely you can't just up and leave now. Not after whatever all this was. The people around you all seem fine too, but there's no telling if they'll get aggressive at you for even moving too much. Never mind outright getting up and leaving. You decide to let this run its course, hopefully someone will come along, right? Or at least turn the film off, right? You continue to chant along with everyone else. You start to feel lightheaded. Oh, I'm running out of breath. You feel as if you could fall asleep, but your eyes don't feel heavy in the slightest. You try to look around and gauge the other's emotional state. What? But you can't seem to look away from the screen. You try again, but you're still locked into the eye contact of the cat on screen. Oh my gosh! Feels like they're like the low-key they're singing Nia Cat at me now. Nya, 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 nya. You attempt to physically force your line of vision away. You steal your nerves, ready to throw yourself to the ground if you need to. But your body only gets as far as tensing up for a moment before completely loosening itself again, making you lie back limply on the seat. You think you should be panicking right about now, but even your brain feels limp. Your thoughts a vaguely muted pastel pink, airy, sickly sweet and loosened spun like cotton candy. You... you like cotton candy. You think you shouldn't mind your thoughts and bodies being like cotton candy either, so I'd, why get up and ruin that? Oh my gosh, I'm trolly in trance, guys. It's nice here. You're more at peace than you ever felt before in such a crowded room. Still chanting, you've never felt so aligned and in tune with another person, let alone with an entire room full of complete strangers. You're not, you're not alone. Out of the corner of your eye, the person next to you starts to sink back into even further into their seat <laughs> then they sink more oh my gosh then more not like they're slouching or reclining but more like they're going into their seat oh i was not expecting that deflating 
Their skin bounces up and wrinkles like fabric as if their muscles, their bones, have started to disintegrate. Their eyes dim before sinking into their sockets. Their mouth, still attempting to chant, falls open over a cut off nah. Gaping at the word ends in an awful hiss, a final weak release of air. You muse thoughtfully about whether or not you should be distressed at the sight. Goodness gracious, but even then, the blanket of peace doesn't leave you. It just intensifies, guys. Suddenly, with the pile of skin and clothes next to you, you see a lump moving around. You watched in dazed fascination as the lump makes its way to the part of the skin where the head used to be. And out from the mouth is a cat! Crawls a tiny black cat! Turns out we're all black cats inside, guys. Nya, nya, nya. You can hear the familiar hissing sound all around you now as the unified chants start to fade and everyone turns into beautiful kitties. Only to replace with the faint mewing, meowing of kittens. Finally, your voice is the only one still chanting, still human and alone. Again. You don't want that. You can't go back to that. I must turn into a kitty and become one with everyone else. Not again. Not again. Please. Just then, you go completely limp. Your body feels light, but it might as well weigh several tons because you realize quite suddenly that you can't move. Not an inch. You can't shift your eyes to look around. You can't even breathe. But somehow, the chant continues to creak weakly from your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. A few kids come forward and perch themselves on the chairs around you, watching your sinking body, meowing as they wait for their youngest sibling to emerge from you. Dozens of glowing eyes peer down at you, and as your eyes start to cave into the sockets of your softening skull, you manage to make out the silhouette of a familiar cat. They all look the same! Perching on the seat right in front of you. Your vision finally fades, and as that same hiss of air expels itself from your mouth, the last thing you sense is something small and alive, shifting eagerly under your skin. Happy birthday! I love it. Oh wait, let's try to leave this time. Try to leave the theater. This is too weird. I need to get out of here. Gathering your courage or perhaps putting your fear to use, you stand up, fully intending to leave the theater. When Everything comes to an abrupt stop. All of the chanting stops, even the cats chanting on the screen. You tense and risk a glance around the theater. They're all staring at you. My biggest fear. Nice. Every single one of them. They're not moving. They're not even blinking. You swallow, throat suddenly dry even though a nervous sweat completely soaks through your clothes. You highly doubt that sitting back down will fix the situation. Your legs are shaking under the audience's unnaturally intense scrutiny. But you force yourself to step forward and forward and forward until you finally reach the end of the aisle. You feel their collective gaze even worse on the staircase. All their eyes have turned uncomfortably to the left to look directly at you. The screen illuminates their faces, making clear their blank scowls. They seem even more upset than they had been minutes ago. Identical frown lines digging between their brows. Dot dot dot. You keep going, the heavy atmosphere could becoming more and more oppressive with every step. You're so tense with anticipation that you fully expect someone to grab at you from behind. But no one does! Luckily, you don't hear any of them even get up. You exit the theater holding your breath as the doors close behind you. We good? We in the clear? You briskly walk through the halls, putting as much distance as possible between you and that theater full of people. Finally reaching the lobby, you just barely manage to catch yourself from falling to the floor as you gulp in huge gasp of air. You expect to feel relief after you breathing calms, but you feel a lingering sense of dread that only spikes once you finally notice it. As well as its source, you look up and your stomach sinks. What? Oh, yeah, it's not over. The nightmare's not finished, guys. I did not leave anything behind. Oh, that is creepy. All the people in the lobby area, even the lobby? Everyone in the line at the concession stand, all of them are staring at you and they, they look even angrier than the people in the theater. You don't hesitate this time. You duck your head, avoiding eye contact and leave the cinema. Oh my God, even the people outside. Okay, 
Okay, I can't do that. I can't do that. You ignore the glares of everyone in the ticket booth and the line leading to them. Ooh. You make your way home. Oh! Whenever you dare to look up at someone on the way, you flinch at the blatant anger, fury, and disgust on their face. You think you start to hear the faint sound of a cat meowing behind you or maybe a kitten's. But does it matter? You just want to go home. Oh, you reach your front door and fumble with the keys. Cowering from the look of pure hatred on your neighbor's face as he stares at you from his door. Finally, you get inside your apartment. Lock all the locks on the door and slide down with your back against it till you're sitting on the floor. You allow yourself a moment to breathe. Now home, your heart breath calms and your fear slowly bleeds from you, leaving you slowly or feeling strangely empty. Da da da. You pass the kitchen, head to your room, and slip under the covers of your bed trying to fall asleep. Maybe it's all just a bad dream. As you fall into a fitful sleep, sure to be full of nightmares of glaring eyes, you try to ignore the ever-increasing sound of cats meowing and yowling in the distance outside your apartment. Ending 17, Black Sheep. I mean, technically, I feel like this is the only ending that we didn't die. So happy ending. Well, let's go ahead and go to the carnival this time. You spend the day at the carnival. Ferris wheel, roller coaster, feral boat, rides you've been on before. Hoops, coin toss, balloon darts, games you played before. Funnel cake, popcorn, cotton candies, foods you've eaten before. All things you've enjoyed before. Why just before? You don't, you don't enjoy it now? You're surrounded by groups of people all having fun together, laughing, playing, eating, taking pictures, making memories. And then there's you. I feel like this game is going to end off on such a sad note. The sun hasn't started to set yet. Still high in the sky, but it will soon. You start to wonder if maybe you should just go home for the day when you stop in your tracks what what stop me you see something new an attraction you've never seen before a maze of fun house mirrors Ooh, it sounds kind of lame honestly there isn't even a line to get in but then what else is there to do let's enter the maze you enter the maze a few rooms in and you notice that the mirrors aren't all weird some just show you looking back at yourself a little bored a lot tired and so very very maybe this was a mistake oh my gosh why did you think going into a maze of mirrors was a good idea even if it was something new to experience i i can't do this today you turn around to head back the way you came only to bump into oh we're stuck ow what the where's the exit you try again only to find yourself you're another mirror blocking your way. By the time you're all turned around, you realize that the way you came is completely gone. Oh, uh, okay. Don't panic. I just have to keep going forward. You walk through the only opening you can find and nearly trip over something on the ground. You bend down and pick it up. Hmm? What is this thing doing here? In your hand rests a worn looking flashlight. Curious, you flick it on. Click. Huh? The light doesn't look very, oh my gosh, I knew it. Break the lights. Did the power go out or did the attraction operator forget you were in here? How long have you been in here actually? You pull out your phone to check the time or make a call to the police and your phone is dead. You grip the flashlight in your hand. The light it emitted earlier was dim enough for you to know there's probably not that much juice left. Best to reserve it for a worst case scenario and fill your way out. Yeah, yeah, you, you can do this. You take a calming breath. Well, forward we go. Hello, darling adventurer. Oh my gosh, don't, no, 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 no. Who said that? Welcome to the maze. Would you like to know how to navigate the maze? Who is talking to me? No, but I have some questions. What would you like to know? Um, can you let me go? Your request to forfeit is denied. Let me out of here! Screaming is not allowed in the maze. Can you turn off the flash? What flash? Of course, flash off. I'm gonna turn it on just so I can see what that means. The game is too hard. Oh, all right, your flashlight will give you seven second chance and the flash will last longer. Is that better? Can you tell me about the maze? as you wish. This is where we should have started, guys. Once again, welcome to the mirror maze. You're in a bit of a jam, but don't worry. You're in good hands, or rather, good paws. <laughs> See these little cuties here? They'll be doing their best to guide you through the maze. 
Aren't they generous? When you enter a room, the emergency light will flash, letting you know the path before you for a second. Oh, and also what lies beyond them. When you see these kind kitties, just go where they are and you'll reach the next room. Unfortunately, they're not the only things in here. It is highly suggested that you refrain from following any of our other guests. They can be sneaky or distracting, but they're always hostile. So please take caution when advocating to the next room. Of course, this wouldn't be much of a mirror maze without mirrors. Can they hurt you? No, they're just mirrors, silly. They don't do anything at all. And you can't do anything to them either. They're just an obstacle you can't pass through. Go left, go center, or go right. The choice is yours, though. If you find a room with no helpful kitties in sight, and all the path leads to a mirror or something else, it's recommended that you stay put. And just maybe it will work itself out. <laughs> okay. Now for your navigation tools. Oh, that's the flash. You're, the flashlight you found doesn't have much juice left. It only lets you get a quick extra peek at your surroundings about five times. So let's try not to use it all up at once. You can keep track of your progress through the rooms up to the left. Interesting, your lives up to the right. You get three lives, so be careful to avoid the less friendly guests lurking around. Why only three lives, you ask? Because you're soft and squishy, of course. <laughs> It wouldn't take much to damage you beyond repair. And besides, you're human, and humans usually only have one life, yes? And yet, here, you got three! So we're being generous. You're welcome. Don't you think you ought to show a little more gratitude? I didn't even say anything! That's the end of the tutorial. Hopefully it helps. Are you ready to play? So, let's reset the settings, you got it? And I'm just gonna play how it's intended. Uh, first playthrough, I'm gonna play as intended, and I'm probably gonna make it easy afterwards. Three, two, one. Oh, right. Easy. Okay, next room. Easy. Right. Nice. Okay. Left. Awesome. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, but let's not say anything. Let's stay, because they all... The roof room feels off. Just wait. You think something just changed? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Maybe I got them great gamer eyes. So far, it's easy, guys. Very easy. Okay, next room. Oh my freaking goodness! What is this? I think we just gotta stay, right? This room feels off. Just wait. Uh, I think something changed. Oh my freaking goodness. Why? That is actually so creepy. Okay, thank you. And we good. Nice. <gasps> you see it? The exits! You run forward, but as you do, the scenery shifts. Just slightly at first, but you're running too fast to stop yourself from colliding into the glass. Oh, what? Except you don't quite go into the glass. You don't exactly collide with it either. You simply pass through it. And on the other side, you see an endless white void and... Ooh, who are you guys? Who are, who are you guys? Well, what are you doing here? Are we all together? Oh, yourself? Oh, that's me. Oh, is this a bunch of us? Dozens of you hundreds of you wandering around. Is this my past life? Not my past life, but other timelines of me aimless baseless and Empty so empty and listless. They don't even acknowledge your presence, huh? You try to turn back, but the glass doesn't give past the glass. Oh, of course I see a kitty a familiar black cat walks up and looks at you You think it meows at you, but you can't hear it. Yep. You can't make out the sound it tilts its head then walks away. The glass goes dark. And then it disappears and I'm stuck here forever with the rest of my timelines. Then you watch helplessly as it disappears completely. Mm, you're trapped with only yourself as company. Oh, that's great. Ending 19, you beat the maze, smiley face. Okay, let's do that again, guys. This time we're gonna go ahead and try to die. Okay, so we're gonna go center. Oh, not that way. And I died, guys. Suddenly, oh, the lights turn on. Your eyes burn from the sudden brightness. As your vision adjusts, you see that you're completely surrounded by mirrors. Oh my gosh, the reflection all grotesque in unique ways. Look nothing like you, but they do look hungry. Oh my gosh, you back up. You don't know where to go. Was there even a way out to begin with? Oh my gosh, you bump back into a mirror. Oh my gosh, he got me and feel a hand firmly grip your shoulder. 
chomp. Gah! There's a sharp pain in your other shoulder. You rip away, looking back to see some thing leaning out of the mirror. Its face has no features, save for a large gaping mouth, stained in your blood. Looking around in a panic, you think that the mirrors feel closer than before. The path you come in from is long gone. You're surrounded and every time you blink, you could swear the mirrors were getting closer and closer and closer. Your horrifying reflections looking hungrier and hungrier and hungry. Ending 20, you filled the maze. Sad face. This time we're gonna go ahead. Don't take the cat home, but this time, actually let's see if we leave the cat, if it would change and if we decide to turn back. Will anything change? Aw, how are you supposed to walk away from that? What kind of monster would you be if you could? You're, you sigh a little and walk back to the cat. Aww. It looks almost hopeful, it's still wishing faster as it leans up a little more towards you, as if eager for your next move. Huh, what if I decide to leave again? You really can afford to take the cat home with you. Well, maybe it wouldn't be completely impossible. A few extraneous luxuries cut here and there, and you could see things working out, sure, but there's a slight problem that's been making you waver this whole time. One you simply can't ignore. That problem being that you can't trust this cat. It sounds ridiculous even in your head, but something about those yellow eyes, the cute little paws. Cats don't require trust to care for. They're incapable of betrayal or deception specifically because they're like other animals. They only seek out the most basic essentials of living, procreation and comfort. Malice isn't something that could ever logically be applied to them. And yet you feel it that behind that gut-wrenching, adorable face, there is something evil, is <laughs> something dangerous. And that something brought you here. It called you here. You're a curious person, but even you can't shake the deep, instinctual desire to get away from it, get away from it, get away from it. The cat's face looks blank. <laughs> it's an expression you've, been, you've seen on many cats before, but something about it feels sharper. Like it's aware of your thoughts and your intentions to leave. Oh, 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 I made it mad. I made it mad, guys. Oh, wait, what was it? And it's daring you to try. Try to leave me. Try to leave me! You slowly stand up. The cat tracks your movement with his eyes, not bothering to move its head. You don't say a word. You try not to even think. Get away from it, get away from it, get away from it, get away from it. Though you don't really succeed. You turn around and quickly leave the alley, feeling those sharp eyes on you the whole way. When you get a good distance away, you finally take in deep gulps of air. <sighs> you, you feel better now, and there's still plenty of time left to enjoy your day. As long as you forget everything that just happened, but what to do. Oh, they changed it. Let's try going back to the movie theater and see what happens. It's weird that this is all like changed. Is it the same though? I think it might be the same dot dot. Oh, oh, what? Oh, if I try to go anywhere else and go back. What the, how did I get back here? <laughs> the little smirk it gave me. Get away from it, get away from it, get away from it, get away from it. Dot dot dot. You leave the alley quickly. What now? Let's go to the dog part this time. You decide to go to the dog part and you look the cute little cat, several of them. The cute doggies, the, the park is bustling, awesome. Oh, they're so cute. Oh, oh. does that happen last time? You, you decide to move on. Okay, so this is all the same, right? You don't have to wait very long. You stop at the smallest, cutest puppy view you've ever seen scamper up to you, blocking your path. Puppy. You pick up the puppy <sighs> and... This cat is so devious! The cat's face looks. Get away from me, get away from me, get away from it. You quickly leave again! What now? What do we go back to the movies? Anything? Okay, this time we go to the new cinema. You don't know why, but you don't feel that great about the idea of being alone right now. Okay, so you head inside. Ooh! Oh! I gotta chill! Looking at that just now, guys, the cat's face looks, get away from it, get away from it, get away from it, get away from it. You quickly leave the alley again, guys. What now? Go to the, go to the carnival. Go to the carnival. There's Ferris wheels and, and funnel cakes and happiness. Or used to be happiness. And then there's you. 
Okay, you start to wonder, maybe you should just go home for the day when you stop in your tracks. You see something new, an attraction you've never seen before. It sounds kind of lame, honestly. Oh, but then what else is there to do? Enter the maze. You enter the maze. Dot, dot, dot. Oh! That actually gave me chills. Dot, dot, dot. You leave the alley quickly. Dot, dot, dot. What now? I, I think I'll just go home. I'm just going home. Wait, haven't you, have you done this before? You feel sick. Looking around, you suddenly realize that unlike earlier, there isn't a single person in sight. You're alone. You're completely alone. So why do you feel like you're being watched right now? You feel your heartbeat start to race. You need to get home now. You walk back home, the feeling of eyes on your back getting worse with each step. Oh, is it going to take me back to the cat if I try to go home? By the time you are fumbling with your keys on your door, you're soaked through with cold sweat. Your skin prickles and itches. The heavy gaze you feel might as well be eyeballs physically pressuring or pressing into your flesh. Sticky and unnatural. You finally get inside and... Ah! The weight of relief in the sigh that escapes through your lips actually causes you to physically shudder. The horrible feeling from earlier immediately dissipates as if it were never there. In the wake of its departure, you're left shaking and cold in your sweat-soaked clothes, but you're too relieved to care. Exhausted, you mentally pass on the very concept of eating and head straight to your bedroom. Da da da, you open the door and- OH MY GOSH! Hey kitty. Hi. Hey. Oh my gosh, that smile. Oh, I hate that. Not again. No. No. You back it, it up in fear, eyes trained on the cat in its horrifying grin. You need to escape. You need to get out. But even if home isn't safe anymore, where will you go? You risk a glance around and... And well, you see that the walls of all around you have been fleshy and lined with sharp teeth. The ground now a tongue writhing under your feet. In horror, you realize that the alley's entrance is getting smaller and smaller, closing like a mouth. You try to run for the exit. Nowhere to hide, nowhere to hide, nowhere to hide, nowhere to hide. But trying to run on the tongue slows your speed significantly as you stumble and trip. No. You watch helplessly as the last silver of light from the entrance tightens beyond a size you could never hope to squeeze through. As darkness falls around you or over you, you feel the damp humidity of the mouth all around you. The walls, the walls of teeth, bangs, take their time closing in closer and closer. And I'm dead. Love light. Love it. Ending 23, feedback loop. Let's stay this time and see what happens, dot, dot, dot. It's strange. The more you hesitate to leave the alley, the more you find yourself wondering, what's the point? You'll go where? Do what? What's the point when you're always doing all of it completely and utterly alone? Ooh, there goes the theme about being alone and sad again. Even going home to your apartment wouldn't help, would it? One bedroom, one bathroom, and one you living alone in it. It's been like that for so, so long. So long. You startled when you feel an impossible soft paw press lightly against your wet- I'm crying and the cat is consulting me right now? You didn't realize you've been crying or that your little breakdown had literally brought you to your knees right in front of the cat's box. Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> you feel slightly embarrassed, but the cat responds as if it can sense yourself deprecating feelings creeping in. Oh. It presses its paws on your cheek three times in quick succession, as if trying to slap you out of your melancholic state. But they're so light, the slaps feel more like getting gently and eagerly petted. You can't help but laugh a little. Can't believe I'm having a meltdown in a dirty old alley with a stray cat comforting me. You smile and show your gratitude with a scratch on the cat's chin. Aww. Thanks. I'm fine, really. That just happens sometimes. I really do like being alone most of the time. It's the only time I feel comfortable being myself, you know? But even I get lonely every now and then. It's easy to ignore when I'm keeping myself busy. That's why I pushed myself to go out today, I think. 
<sighs> or maybe I was hoping to make a friend or something, but I guess that wouldn't be a good idea. I doubt someone like me would make for a very good friend to anyone. Aww. <laughs> okay, okay, maybe I won't go so far as to say that, but... Ugh, you stay and just talk to the cat about anything that comes to mind. Your isolated, your loneliness, your many fears, your losses, your emptiness. Although, the longer you stay there, the smaller that one significant emptiness feels. It's been so long since someone just listened. Your words shift to a gentler topic. Your hopes, your dreams, happy memories of the past. What? What is happening to me? As you talk, you don't even notice the once cold and concrete walls of the alley becoming flesh-like, warm and pink, its softness slowly engulfing the both of you. The sound of your own voice feels hypnotic as it reaches your ears, encouraging you to speak more of the depths of your heart into the open. You give in easily. When you do run out of words, you're not sure how long you've been sitting there, but not knowing doesn't seem to bother you. Still, a strange question enters your mind. Leave and go home? Ugh, dot dot dot. Why would I want to do that? You're too tired to move. Pouring out your heart and soul has taken a surprising toll on you, but you have no regrets. You're so happy. You don't think you've ever felt so heard, so seen. You lean towards or forward to rest your head on the box. You don't feel the rough cardboard you were expecting. Instead, you find something resting on a mass of something. Something soft and slightly damp and warm. So, so warm. But you can't find it in you to care on what it could be. You're so tired. You close your eyes. And you get the feeling that they'll probably never open again. But OH MY GOSH THERE'S EYEBALLS! But as they're all encompassing warmth encases you slowly, completely, you feel nothing but pure contentment. Ending 22, not alone. That was one of the sadder endings too. OH! You can't skip! They're, they're not allowing you- OH MY GOSH! Okay, so we're, they're doing the eyeball thing. I'm guessing I, I'm- as I complete more, um, levels or more endings. Awesome. In the day leading up to my meeting with IT, has been obsessed with a memory. What memory? Someone precious to me had found someone precious to them. My best friend. My only friend. I was happy for them, truly. But then I've been happy for the others too. They promised it wouldn't happen to me again. That they knew how it felt to be told by someone you cared for that they'll outgrow you and your friendship. Oh my gosh. That... They'll never, ever do such a thing to me. But they did. They did it to you. There's not a moment that passes now that I wish I'll risk the pain of their rejection. And just believe them. Oh, so I didn't even give them a chance. I pulled away before they could, trying to protect my fragile heart. Oh my gosh. But it only hurt all the more. Selfish as it was, I wanted them to fight harder to keep me around. When it appeared before me, it promised to be just that. A friend that would never, ever let me go. A friend that would never, ever leave me. You got what you wanted, I guess. And all I had to do was promise the same thing in return. I'm guessing something fell through? Dot, dot, dot. And now they're allowing me to skip. You're walking. Okay. Oh, the weather's good today. The good thing, maybe good luck too. Yes, lucky. Lucky, 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 whoa, 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 this is not the same thing, whoa! Lucky, 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 lucky! Or maybe it was fate? Anyways, I think we finished all of the leave the cat endings, so I'm gonna go ahead and now start working on the feed the cat and see what happens. The cat must be hungry, right? You can't imagine that it's had much to eat if it's so attached to that box it's in, though it doesn't exactly seem malnourished either. Surely it must have left the box to search for food then. Mm. For some reason, something in the back of your mind tells you that's not the case. And not to think on it any further. <laughs> well, anyways, you can't exactly enjoy your day out knowing you left behind a hungry kitty. Especially when you could have done something to help. So, what do you do about the hungry kitty? Let's uh, check our pockets. You dig into your pocket. You find a small piece of string in your left pocket not very helpful the string is far too short and eager to oh my god in your right pocket 
Oh, it's a chocolate bar! You find a chocolate bar. Is it... Nope, it's not even expired. Quite the find indeed. You're about to offer it to the kitty. Huh? When suddenly you're hit with guilt as you remember something gut curdling. Chocolate is toxic to cats! You resist the urge to vomit at your near mistake. You feel so guilty you throw the chocolate bar away into a nearby trash bin. An almost cat killer doesn't deserve chocolate. You go back to the cat, barely able to stand its innocently oblivious expression. It doesn't even know what they, the, the, what you almost did to it. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't even know what to say. You're a horrible person. You, you know what? Stay here. I'll be right back. You leave the alley and return with a whole fish. You brought it in a nearby grocery shop. Nice. It was a bit pricey, but it was the least you could do for what you did, honestly. Aw, you happy with that? The cat eagerly accepts your offering, munching happily at the fish after you place it in the box. Oh, so, so cute. You want to smile at the sight, but you just feel so awful. Oh, am I still feeling bad about... Oh, no. Sorry again. The cat seemingly pays you no mind as you slip back out of the alley. Not feeling like you deserve a peaceful day out, you decide just to head back home. Dang. Oh, the cat! On the way home, you notice more cats- Oh wait, more different cats than usual? Watching you from their hiding spot, but you try not to think about it. Oh my gosh, you can't help but wonder if they know what you nearly done. Oop, not all the cats gossiping and knowing what you did. It's not like you meant to hurt anyone. Ugh, right? Mm-hmm. You finally reach your apartment building. You, you're you about to unlock the door when... Oh my gosh, all the cats. Do they all want, do they all want fishies or they know what I did? Let's see. Huh? Oh, you look behind you only to see dozens of cats standing there looking at you. Did they see you feeding the cat in the alley and thought that you had more food for all of them? I, I'm sorry, I don't have any, any more food for you guys. None of them moved an inch. You're starting to feel a little unnerved when finally a single cat pushes its way to the front and... <gasps> Not in bringing the chocolate! Oh, it's you! Held carefully between its teeth is the chocolate bar you thrown away earlier. It's placed the chocolate bar down in front of it before looking back at you. All the cats look up at you. You could feel their judgments. Not me being judged by kitties! Oh no. You feel your sins weighing down heavily on your back. But without the money to buy enough food for all of them, you don't know what to do. Beg for forgiveness! You collapse your knees and bow down low as you start to earnestly beg for their forgiveness. I'm so sorry. I swear. I, I don't... I, I do anything to make it up to you all, but... But you're out of options. Suddenly... Oh, what? Huh. You feel something stir in your stomach and swim its way up to your throat, closing off your airways as it tries to force its way out of your esophagus. It finally succeeds with aid from your helpless gagging. What is coming out for me? My heart? Huh? What, what the? Lying on the ground in front of you. Fish? I don't remember eating fish. How'd they get in there? It's a flopping fish. You just... Throw up a living fish? What the heck? The cat comes rushing forward, all tearing hungrily at the fish. You're happy to finally be of help, truly, but how? Ugh. Oh, another fish? You throw up another fish? Oh my gosh! I'm just gonna be throwing up fish for days! And another, though low key, life hack, endless food. Your stomach hurts, you're getting dizzy, you fall to your knees. Tears and snot are streaming down your face by the time you cough up a final tiny bloody fish and collapse forward. Your throat and stomach both burn in a way that feels dangerous. You start to fade out. Despite the pain, you strangely feel a more overwhelming sense of hopeful pride that you've made up for your disgusting actions, that you've been forgiven. What am I- I'm- I'm, I'm feeling redeemed. The sounds of happy cats are munching away at their fish fills your ears and then... <laughs> oh, they give you back the chocolate bar. You feel something being nudged into your hand. It feels like it's the bar of chocolate you found in your pocket. <laughs> you smile weakly. You successfully atoned, but you don't really have the strength to eat your reward. <laughs> Sadly, the last taste in your mouth as you leave this mortal coil doesn't get to be that of chocolate, but raw fish. Blah. 
Ending 24, fishing for pardon. Let's read the kitty. Check the pockets. It's a bar of chocolate? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I was trying to go down the route again. I was trying to go down the route again, then this time pick going inside my house instead of begging for forgiveness, but they just stopped me here and said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Whoa, okay, that was crazy. Anyways, now we're just gonna go inside. You decide to cut your losses and head inside. Your sins weigh down on you, but you're only human. What more can you do? You try to ignore the yelling at the neighborhood cat as you go about your chores. You consider preparing dinner. But how could you enjoy it knowing how hungry those poor cats at South are? We're just gonna ignore them. That's how we'll enjoy it. The ones you've wronged. <laughs> Decide to take a bath and go straight to bed without dinner. A fitting punishment for someone like you. You forgo the fancy bath bubbles because you don't deserve them and sink into the water with a sigh. Your mind races, but you can't really think of any immediate solutions that doesn't require more money. You wish there was something, anything you could do to make up um, things right and suddenly your legs start to feel really itchy you try to lift one to see what's going on but what rises out of the water isn't a pair of legs what what is it what is it what is it oh i'm a fish i'm a mermaid it's it's a fish tail you you feel dizzy at the sight maybe you're hallucinating from the stress you try to climb out of the tub to cool your head but instead of your hand raising up to brace itself stretches out to plop on the rim it's too weak to hold your weight and you're so startled by the sight oh oh i fell that you slipped and smacked your head on the side of the bathtub passing out almost immediately you're awake you think anyways you open your eyes and you're underwater you must have slid beneath the surface of the bath water you gasp instinctively except not really Oh gosh, a bubble simply floats out of your mouth, up, up, up to the surface. You're broke as heck, so you know your bathtub isn't that big. Did, did you shrink? But how? And even if there was a reasonable answer, it would explain how you haven't drowned yet. You swim to the edge of the tub and see the truth in the shadow silhouettes. Huh? I'm a fish. You've been turned into a fish? This, this is impossible. You don't get any time to ponder over this, unfortunately, because just then, meow, a shadow looms over you from above. You look up and see the cat. It peers down at you from beyond the water surface. And then you realize this is the answer. This is how you're meant to atone. With a heavy heart, you swim up to the surface. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's like, I'm ready to be eaten. <laughs> just, just accepting my fate, guys. Meow. The cat scoops you up, tosses you out the tub and onto the bathroom tiles. As you flop around gasping for air or water, you realize the cat wasn't alone. They brought their friends with them. Dozens of hungry eyes peer down at you. You can hear the howling or yowling of what sounds like hundreds of cats outside your bathroom window. You send one last look to the cats before closing your eyes and accepting your fate. I'll accept my fate as the cats descend upon you, tearing at your flesh. You find yourself mourning the fact that you're not even big enough to feed all of them. You couldn't properly atone, man. Your efforts, your life, all of it amount to nothing. Ending 25. Seafood sacrifice. Now we're gonna not take the cat home and feed the cat, but this time instead of checking our pockets, we're gonna look around the area and see what comes out. You glance around the dark, dingy alley and only see garbage bags, trash bins, empty cardboard boxes, and scattered litter here and there. If there were something for the cat to eat, surely it would have found it by now, right? But you don't want to give up so easily. You keep looking and look and only to see garbage. You sniff and only smell garbage. You listen and only hear garbage. You just barely make out the sound of faint scurrying by a trash bin a few feet away. Quietly, oh so quietly, you creep over to the bin and you lunge. <laughs> Is it a rat? You weren't very graceful, your attempt. You stumbled and knocked over a stack of nearby boxes full of more trash. But as you stand up, grasped in your hand, 
It is! It's a small mouse! Goodness gracious, why am I touching it though? The mouse squeaks and squeals in distress, wiggling and struggling desperately in your grip. You're holding it too tightly and carefully for it to be able to bite or scratch you though. It wears itself out eventually and looks up at your black eyes. It's completely at your mercy. Let's feed it to the cats! Oh my gosh, the eyes got bigger! The mouse looks scared as if it could sense your intentions. It's like, no, please, please, I'm having children to pay for or to, to live for, I don't know. It's weakly starts to struggle again. Oh, the mouse is reluctant. Feed mouse to cat. You feed the mouse to the cat. You like that kitty? The cat tears it apart instantly. Oh, I feel terrible. I feel terrible. I feel bad. No. The mouse pain squeaks and squeals pierce through you until you're abruptly, they're abruptly cut off. Satisfied the cat mews happily at you, red tinging its fangs. <coughs> at least someone's happy. The cat curls up and it's now bloodstained box and goes to sleep. Awesome. You take the chance to leave. A well-fed cat will likely follow you home after all. And cute as the cat is, you, you really can't afford a pet right now. Still feeling a little guilty about the mouse, you decide to just go home. Dot, 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 After a long walk home, you finally enter your apartment. You head straight for your room and collapse in your bed, falling into a fitful sleep. Later, you wake up. Oh, gosh. Ooh, the mouse, the mouse haunts my dreams, guys. To squeaking and scurrying noises all around you. So loud and constant. They sound like screams in the darkness of your room. Oh, oh, his homies pulled up, guys. You see the shifting shadows of hundreds of mice surrounding your bed. You try to run, but you cry out as twin lances of pain runs up your legs. You fall off the bed in your attempt to escape. The hordes of mice dodging you as you crash the ground. You, you can't stand up. Looking back and squinting in the dark, you just about make out the source of your pain. What? The freak? The flesh and tendons of your heel and ankles are... That, so that's my, that's my leg! They were just gnawing at my legs! Bitten through your socks. Oh, that's my socks. I was wondering what it, why it looked like that. No, 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 no. Leave me alone! Desperate, you crawl with only your arms towards the door. The mice descend upon you. Biting into your skin. Gnawing away pieces of you. You start to fade in and out of consciousness, but you still reach up for the doorknob. Your arm heavy, weighted down by the mice clinging to it with little claws and tiny teeth. You manage to jostle the knob enough for the door to slowly swing open. But I'm dead. Plop. Oh my gosh, they got my arm off? but your outstretched arm suddenly falls to the ground lifeless. The mice manage to chew through the flesh and bone of your now dismembered limb. As a few mice creep forward to curiously inspect your arm, you stare blankly at it for a moment before sliding your gaze up. In the newly opened doorway sits a familiar looking mouse. It stares at you. The darkness in its beady black eyes. You can't begin to measure their depths. Oh my gosh! Nor the hatred pouring out from within them. All of it aimed at you. Ah! Oh, you collapse, head hitting the floor as your other arm is eaten away as well. You're not sure how you're still conscious. The pain should be indescribable. And yet, you just feel a cold sense of loss. The mice have clustered along with your back now, gnawing and ripping their way between your shoulder blades, into your back, into your chest. <coughs> you weakly cough up blood. They must have damaged something important. You feel something being pulled out of you, and in between the moments that blankets of darkness fade out your vision, you hear something wet plop on the ground in front of you. You pry your eyes open and see it in front of the mouse. My heart! Oh 
Oh my gosh, weirdly shaped red with your blood and pulsing and oh, that's, that's your heart, isn't it? <laughs> the other mice all descend upon it, abandoning your half-eaten body for that heart. You're losing a lot of blood. You feel sleepy, but you also feel angry? Yes, so, so much anger. How dare they? How dare they? Last thing you see before your vision fails you is a pair of glowing eyes leering in from the darkness beyond the doorway. Wait, 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 what? You can hear squeaks and squirrels of terror all around you? Is, is a cat actually beating them up? Deep snars, gnashing teeth, tearing flesh. As your remaining senses leave you, your smile weakly with the last of your strength. When something with soft, slightly damp and sticky fur nuzzles your cheek. Aww. Cat really said nobody can kill you but me. <laughs> Good kitty. Ending 27, well fed. Okay, this time guys, let's go ahead and not feed the kitty the adorable mouse. Cause they're gonna have, they're gonna want revenge, you know guys? So let's spare the mouse. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll spare it. Oh, the cat's like, what man? I was looking forward to that. You can hear the cat's stomach growling. It must be so hungry. It must be starving. I'm sparing the mouse. <laughs> the cat's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, no, no. Spare the mouse. You heard me. I'm not going back with my bird. I'm staying on all business. Dot, dot, dot. You're mocking me, aren't you? Last chance. Oh my gosh. Hand over the prey. Now. Spare the mouse. Feed mouse. No, we're sparing it. We're sparing it. Freak you, kitty! Dot, dot, dot. You let the mouse go. It scurries away, squeezing into a tiny hole in the wall, but you don't pay it much mind. Oh my gosh! You don't flinch as a giant clawed paw slowly falls in front of you, blocking your path to the alley's entrance. Not that you had any delusions about escaping. Yeah, after seeing that, I would not think I'll escape. The cat is hungry after all. Oop, am I gonna feed the cat? You're, you close your eyes in acceptance as the paw gently pulls you back and back and chomp. Lovely! Ending 26, a life spared. Okay, so we I just went back to this, feed the cat, and blood popped up. Before it was a question mark, guys. So let's click blood and see what happens. The cat lets out a sad, pleading little sound. It's hungry. It must be starving, so you... Oh my gosh. You look around and see a nearby shard of glass. Your body moves as if it knows what to do. What needs to be done? You take the shard and... Ooh. Uh, what? Why would you? Why, why would you do that? But the cat seems happy, right? Go ahead, give me that meow of satisfaction. Oh, just kidding. Go ahead and give me the creepy eyes, crazy eyes. That works too. Oh my gosh! You carefully hold your finger over that. That cat's about to bite that finger off. There's no one drop of blood and satisfied. No, he wants the whole finger. Dark red blood beads at the wound. Oh my god. <laughs> there there you go you get a taste of it before growing heavy enough to drip into the cat's open waiting jaws it meows happily at you <coughs> at least someone's happy you smile warmly and lower your hand into the box choking the cat's cheek before letting it lap gently at your bleeding finger oh it's gentle huh when the flow gets weak and the cat meows for more you squeeze below the wound coaxing more blood out you feel a strange but welcome sense of comfort when the odd exchange. A being other than yourself was hungry and you were able to provide its substance. A small wrong in the world made right, even if so strangely done and only temporary. Ironically, it's that moment that you start to feel dizzy. You didn't think you were losing that much blood. You slump against the cat's box and listen to its mews in distress. It's like, no, you can't die yet. I'm still enjoying the blood. You think it sounds worried about you, or at least you'll like to think so. 
it could just want more blood as well. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. The cat hops out of the box and into your lap, nuzzling at your stomach and meowing unhappily. You wish you could ease its concern, but it's not like you can just talk to each other. You can't help but try to remember the last time you talked to anyone, actually. If you were to die here and now in the alley, how long would it take for someone to realize you were missing, that you were gone? Oh, that's sad. Oh, I'm awake. Your thoughts are interrupted when the cat yells louder, tensing up your lap. You don't have time to wonder why as a voice rings out from the entryway to the alley. Hello? Uh, who is it? What is it actually someone? Hey, you. Are you all right? You don't answer. You don't think you can. Your voice feels locked away deep, deep within you. The cat looks up at you with a long stare as if assessing you. It looks back towards the voice, and with a final nuzzle to your stomach, it hops out of your lap, walking towards the alleyway's entrance. But then, to start- Oh! Oh! What? 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 Huh? What is happening? Whoa, 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 whoa! I honestly thought that the, maybe the cat was gonna go get help from the person. Its face opens up. Crack. It peels back. It opens again. Ugh! Ripping tendrons peeking out from where you think its mouth should be. The stranger silhouette freezes in the light beyond the alley. What the heck is- But they don't have the chance to finish their question. The tendrils converge into one before shooting out the cat's jaw. Oh, it piercing into the stranger's shoulder. Oh, I feel bad. Ah. Oh. They let out a, a cry, a pained cry, a fearful yell. They claw at the tendrils, trying to pull them loose, but it's to no avail. You can't seem to process their screams. You stare at the creature before you, so different from the cat who meowed out of concern for you earlier. Let's go ahead and let the cat feed. Better you than me, I always say, right? Ugh. So it feels so bad because he actually came to come and help us. Someone help me help. help. You look away as the creature devours the stranger, draining them until they're nothing but a husk of bone, skin, and clothes heaps on the floor. You feel awful, but what could you do? The creature is, is also a living thing. Shouldn't it be allowed to eat what it needs to? Does it not also have the right to do what it must to survive? No, I don't, I, don't, I don't know about that. You ignore the voice in the back of your head that questions if there could have been another way. It's not like you try to see if it could eat anything other than blood. Human blood. Now did you? <sighs> the creature purrs as it rubs its side into your arm. You realize that after a bit of rest, you're already starting to feel better. Yay! But you also think that something inside you feels a little bit broken too. You're just not quite sure what it is yet. You stand and hold out your arm. Still hungry? The creature trills happily and hops into your outstretched arms. Let's go then, yeah? Am I gonna turn into a killer and just go and feed the cat all these people? You leave the alley together. You go onto the world together. The cat is hungry. And it will be hungry often from now on. Very often. <sighs> Screams of fear and terror follow you both wherever you go. And without thought or care or concern for any of it, you just stand back and watch. ND29. Oh, you can eat Bluffet. I love it. Okay, so this time I'm going to go ahead and do the blood ending again. But this time, we're going to go ahead and stop the cats. You can't. Let this happen. You shakily crawl forward and weakly grab at the conjoined tendrils that pulse as they drain the stranger's blood. When you tug as firmly as you're able, the tendrils pulsing halts and the cat turns to you. Like, what you doing? What you doing? It makes a strange trilling noise that sounds like a question, but you have no answer. You can't even understand the question, so you simply scoop up the creature, the cat, Cradle it in your arms. You gaze almost longingly at the light beyond the alleyway's entrance. You don't know what's going on, but you just can't sit by and watch someone else be eaten so viciously. Not when they tried to see if you were okay. Not when you could offer yourself instead. Dang. You think the stranger is set free, 
because after the sound of shoes hastily scurrying on the pavement fades into the distance, you feel something sharp pierce your back. It feels thin, almost like a needle, so the pain passes quickly as your body adjusts to the intrusion. You're sure it wasn't so thin when it skewered through the stranger's shoulder earlier. Yeah, that thing was thick! But as you feel your blood leave your body slowly as if being pumped out, it gets harder to think and your vision starts to fail you. The creature in your arms make a soft sound. You hold it as tightly and closely to you as your weak arms can manage. Dot dot dot. This is fine. You're okay with this. You don't know if this will change anything. Surely the cat will get hungry again at some point after you're gone and no longer an option. But at least this time, you were able to save someone. Any 28 personal care package. Okay, so I think we're finished with all the feed cat endings. So now we're gonna go ahead and go proceed to play with the cat. Let's go play with the cat, guys! Aw, you just want a little attention, don't you? The poor thing must be bored sitting in the box all day. You're not sure you're much of an interesting companion, but you're willing to do your best. There's got to be something you can entertain the little critter with. But what? Oh my gosh, I'm scared to check my pockets! But let's check our pockets again. You dig into your pockets. Oh, it's a string! I forgot the string! We had the string! You find a small piece of string in your left pocket. Not very helpful. The string is far too short. And eager- Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that part, actually. In your right pocket- Oh, it's a bar of chocolate? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Not too helpful here, either. Awesome! <laughs> We're not gonna repeat that chocolate incident, guys. The only other thing you got on you is your phone. It's not much of anything the cat can play with, but... Oh, there is something you can do. Oh, take a cute little photo of the kitty kitty. Oh, and there's hearts. Photo montage. Well, that was fun, right? <laughs> For me. Well, you enjoyed yourself. With nothing else to do and no intention of taking the cat home, you decide to, it's best to just leave. You don't want the cat to get too attached after all. At least you have some memories to take with you. Okay, um, see you around, I guess. Good luck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the cat's just like, what? What Beep. even? Oh, huh? Your, your, your phone just got a message. You open it up and, huh? What? <laughs> Aren't I cute? What? Now that's getting text messages for the cat. It's a picture of a familiar looking cat. Huh? The cat does look cute and happier in the photo. Um, but it's not a picture you recognize taking. What the heck? D did I? You didn't take this picture and I definitely didn't send this text message either. You peek over your shoulder at the cat. It would be so cute and adorable if the cat just has like a little fold in their hand. Aw, they don't. The cat is simply looking at you. It mews sadly as if pleading you to come back. Hang on, hang out and do something else? Get out of the alley! You ignore the cat and briskly walk out of the alley before another look. I'm out of here. Peace. You, that was weird. You're a good distance away when- Oh my gosh, not again. You reluctantly look at the new message and- Don't ignore me! <laughs> Sad face! Oh, that is so cute. Creeped out, you decide to just go home. Oh my gosh! I know you're seeing these! <laughs> oh my gosh! Come back! <laughs> Oh my gosh, the cat is obsessed. Oh, come back. There he goes, those wide eyes. Oh my gosh, come back. Really sending us selfies too. Come back. Oh, that's my least favorite. Come back. Oh my gosh, who gave this kitty my number? Oh my gosh. I was up oh, there. Can see you. Can always see you. You can't hide. I'll always find you. Your eyes dart around nervously, certain that you're being followed. But there's nothing there. Ugh. You finally, you're finally home, but you feel too shaken for any relief to calm you down. You rush to the bathroom and slam the door behind you. Everything's okay. This isn't real. It's like a bad dream. Everything's okay. You fumble in the dark to turn on the sink and flash your face with cold water, hoping it will calm you down, calm your mind, and stop the hallucinations. Because that's all they are, right? 
Hallucinations? You're really regretting leaving home today. You must have been overworking yourself more than you realize. Yeah, that must be. Ah! Oh! New message. You jump as your phone alerts you to yet another message receive. Let's check the phone! Let's see what the kitty has to say. With shaking hands, you look at your phone. Hi, friend. <laughs> oh! Ooh! Ooh! What? what? Startled, you roll around and instinctively jump back. You slipped? Smashing the back of your head into the bathroom mirror? You don't register the pain just yet, your eyes shifting wildly around the room. The heck? There's nothing there, nothing at all. You feel dizzy. You dazedly feel the back of your head and examine your hand. You can't really see anything, but it feels warm and wet. The smell of copper fills the air. The dizziness overwhelms you, and you collapse on the bathroom tiles. Help. You reach for your phone to call the ambulance. The batteries are dead. Dang. Any 30 photo bomber! Okay, guys, so instead of checking our phone, we're just gonna go ahead and ignore it. Ignore it! No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> the phone vibrates insistently over and over, but you just can't look. You keep your eyes squeezed shut. Your fingers tightly grip the sink. In your mind, you beg whoever or whatever is doing this to just stop already. Please, please, please. Just put me out of my misery. You mutter this quietly. You don't really mean it. You don't. But as the words take shape in the darkest corner of your mind, the phone immediately stops vibrating. You'll think that this would give you relief, but you only feel dread sinking heavily into your stomach. You can feel eyes on you. You can feel puffs of air on the back of your neck, damp and deep and slow. You take deep breaths and open your eyes. You look at the mirror. Nothing. You peek around the room. Still nothing. You know that something's there waiting to be acknowledged, for you to accept the fact of its existence. Only then will it ding to give you peace, to free you from a life of constantly looking over your shoulder, of fearing your own image, your own reflection. You can feel its patience, limitless and old. Your lifespan will long expire before it tires of you. So, you close your eyes. Whoa, 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 what are you gonna do and accept it? As your head is severed from your neck, you're filled with peace. Grateful that, at the very least, you never had to see it. Whatever it was. I just closed my eyes. <laughs> Ending 31. Headshot. Okay, so for this next one, I'm gonna go ahead and play with the cat. Check pockets. Let's go ahead and say hang out and do something else and see if something else happens. Well, I guess it could stay a little longer. Aw. But now what to do? Huh? Okay, so we go back to this screen. Okay, that's why I kind of I kind of figured that might be the case So that's why I wanted to save it for last Um, let's play with the cat again, but this time let's look around the area and see what else is around you search around Are we gonna find another rat another mouse? Um, but there's really nothing in the alley that looks interesting enough for the cat to play with so maybe How about a game? Oh, are we gonna do a hide and seek again? You decide on a game you've known since childhood Red light, green light? Oh my gosh, I can already imagine what it's gonna be like. Teaching a cat how to play might be a bit of a challenge, but you get the feeling the feline's natural hunting instincts will help it along. Okay, you walk to the entrance of the alley, the cat mowing at you. <laughs> He's like, no, don't leave me! Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. You ex exaggerate your movements, covering your eyes with your hands, and turn around. One, two, three... Red light! You spin around him. Oh, it's like, what? The cat hasn't left the box, tilting his head as at you in curious confusion. Try something else? No, let's keep playing. You try again. This time, you go in a bit slower. One, two, three. Red light. <laughs> really, it's, it's crazy playing with the cat, though. When you turn around this time, oh, there it is. The cat is out of the box. The cat freezes under your stare as it thinks you can't see it if it doesn't move. So cute. Satisfied that the cat is getting the hang of the game, you turn again, speeding back up. One, two, three, red light! <laughs> 
You turn around. Oh, the cat is a few steps away from the box now, peeking out from behind a dumpster. Its eyes trained rather intensely on you. Um, well, at least it's having fun, right? <laughs> you turn again and feel a sudden chill run down your spine. Oh gosh, you feel silly, but you can't help counting just a little faster this time. One, two, three, red light! <laughs> Rolling around after saying red light, you look at the cat. Oh, it's halfway down the alley closer to you now, but it's as if the perspective of what you're seeing is off somehow. Its pupils are thin slits now. Something, something's not right here. <laughs> the cat meows at you again, but it sounds much deeper than earlier. It's crouched down as if poised to lunge forward. Your breath shudders a little as your heart starts to race. Your foot instinctively shifts back. <laughs> oh my, ew, I knew, I don't like that. You freeze immediately. The cat looks impatient. It wants to keep playing, but you gulp and turn around. Swiftly counting and turning again as you gasp out. One, two, three! <laughs> Red light! Ooh, 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 the ground shakes as you roll back around. To find yourself standing at a long surface of black fur, you slowly look up and up and up. Oh my gosh, that is actually terrifying! It is breathing! To see a giant shadowy figure leering down from its position hunched over you. Hangs dripping with saliva, claws crushing into the concrete walls of the alley. Its glowing eyes are unblinking as they look back at you, the cat waiting for your next turn. But it's so close. If you turn around now, you... You don't want to play anymore. I don't want to play anymore! But for now, let's go ahead and choose... Let's just back up. Keep your eyes trained on the giant looming over you. You take a step back. <laughs> no? That's cheating? What? Restore backup.exe? Begin re restoration? What? Oh! Oh, no, 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 no! Wait, wait, wait! I'm not good with quick time events! Wait, what am I supposed to write? Eight? Wait, B? Oh, backup? Okay. Back. Up. That's easy. Okay. What are you doing? Stop! You're breaking everything! Back up. <laughs> the cat stares as you keep eye contact and back up. You step back and back. Dang, we really cheated a game, guys. And as you take one more step back out of the alley... What? Go home. <laughs> Error? Error! Yeah, I'm like, I literally hacked the game at this point, guys. Error. Error. Error! Error! <laughs> the, the world outside the alley seems to be broken. What exactly did you do? <laughs> Ending 33, error found. So instead of backing up, ooh, that little animation is so creepy. Let's run. Let's run. I knew it's gonna be instant death because as soon as you turn around, that's when they pounce. Yeah. You don't even finish turning around before claws grip your torso, digging in and piercing the soft flesh of your stomach with ease. As you're lifted into the drooling, gaping jaws above you, you can't help but think that there must have been another way out of this. But pointless regrets are pretty typical for you, aren't they? Ending 32, fear quitter. Okay guys, so this time we're gonna go ahead, play with cat, but buy a tie and see what happens. After being out in the alley all alone for who knows how long, you personally think your furry friend deserves something special. I'll be right back, okay? You quickly leave the alley and rush to the nearby pet store. You browse through all the different toys for cats. There are so many to choose from, plush and bright colored and scented with catnip. But you realize that most of the toys aren't meant for a cat to play with alone. You can't stay in the alley laying forever. And you can't exactly afford to get another cat as a playmate. Another? That's it! You know what to do! After a quick and successful search of the store, you make your purchase and rush back to the alley, eager to show off your find. What'd I get? Did I get like a little cat plushie? I'm back! Meow. Yeah. 
The alley feels even gloomier after spending time in direct sunlight. It makes you feel that much prouder of your gift. You skip over to the cat and dig into the store's plastic bag. I got something for you. <laughs> the cat leans in, or leans up, curious at the bag's content. Oh, what is it? You pull out your gift to the cat. <gasps> it is a plushie! Ta-da! <laughs> it's a small cat plushie. The plushie is a light orange cream color with burnt sepia stripes, making it resemble a tabby cat. The synthetic fur is soft, but not unrealistically so. And the large eyes of a pale green more subdued than you would have expected for a toy. There's no denying it's just a plushie, but the thoughtful details still make it almost uncanny to the real thing, which makes it perfect. A companion for the cats, and one you could uh, actually afford. Win-win! <laughs> Do you like it? That's not all. Oh, <laughs> you give the plushie a little squeeze and... Oh, it meows, that's cute. The cat looks unimpressed, I thought so. <laughs> Well, you th you think it's cute. <laughs> Guess your purchase wasn't so successful after all. Out of options and lower on cash, you awkwardly place the plushie in the box next to the cat. You get up and turn to leave. <laughs> it's like I did what I could. You're a few steps away when you hear an electronic meow behind you. Meow. Oh, are you already putting my my um gift to good use? Huh? You just throw it out the box. You turn to see the plush on the ground next to the box. The cat is watching you closely, staring. Um, let me pick up that plushie for you. You may have accidentally pushed it out. You saw I go over to pick up the stuffed toy. You really do want attention, don't you? <laughs> it's like, you got that, right? You hold up the cat doll, examining it a little. It looks a little different. What's different? Oh my gosh, that's so creepy. Did it just look at you? Yeah. Can we not make this creepy? Meow. Oh gosh. Meow. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, chomp. Um The plushie somehow opens it so on mouth before biting into your wrist. Oh my gosh. Ow, stop! You try to fling it off, but its grip on you is strong as it drinks your blood. You hit it against the concrete walls of the alley. You try to tear at its sturdy fabric. But try as you might, you can't seem to hurt it or make it stop. It's just a toy after all. Oh my gosh, guys, how? Eventually you start to feel faint, enough to collapse to your knees in defeat. The stuffed toy is drinking more calmly now. As if its previous aggression had been a mere re reaction to your desperation. It seems satisfied that you're no longer putting up a fight. You learned that from the other cat, didn't you? Rubbed off on his bad behavior. You think you blacked out for a second because though you're still sitting, the next time you're conscious, your eyes are closed. You feel so weak. You have to use all your strength just to pry open your eyes. And when you do, isn't an actual cat now? Freak? It stole my arm! You see a kitten? It's fur of familiar orange cream with the burnt sepia stripes. It's lapping at your wrist. Oh my gosh. The kitten lifts his head and looks at you with piercing pale green eyes. Ugh. It mews at you with a high squeaky pitch. Mouth covered in blood. Adorable! It would be downright adorable if you weren't about to die from blood loss. Yeah. And there goes the other cat. <laughs> the cat scrolls into your line of vision and picks up the kitten. It gives you an indecipherable look before turning away. The cat carries the cat kitten back into the box, starts to carefully and dutifully clean it. <laughs> it's like, that goes my child. I taught you properly. You sway and find you can't right yourself before falling to the ground. It would seem that in the end, you got in the cat a playmate after all. Yup. Living doll. Okay, this time we're going in. <gasps> you are ready? No, I'm not. No, I, I still got another ending in me. I know I do. I know I do. This time I'm leaving. I'm not touching that plushie. I'm not touching that plushie. Ungrateful little monster. <laughs> you huff an annoyance. You're welcome. <laughs> Shaking your head, you turn to leave once again. 
Ooh. Ah! When a sharp pain lances up your arm. The freak? Ugh! Crying out, you grab your arm only for it to... The freak? It fell off? Your arm just fell off. You stare in shock at your severed limb on the ground. Gathering your courage, you turn to look at where your arm had once connected to the rest of you, only to see... Oh, not blood. It's... It's cotton? Touching it, the stump doesn't even hurt. That is... Dang, now I became the doll, guys. Until the same thing happens to your other arm. Who's ripping at me, though? The cat? I don't even know why I want axe. Ugh! You fall when both your legs succumb to the same nonsensical fate, crying out at the agony that comes and goes like it never happened, as if you're not currently laying on the dirty ground of an alley, limbless. What in the world is going on? You can't make sense of it. You can't think straight. The pain has receded, leaving you with a strangely empty pit in your stomach. Considering you still have a stomach and it wasn't replaced with, as you lay back, helpless and still in shock, staring in the sky, <laughs> is a cat's face appearing in your line of vision. Hey, kitty. Hey. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it lunge at your torso and starts biting and clawing into your chest like you're a chew toy. It doesn't hurt anymore. You feel like it should, you're not sure if you're glad that it doesn't. Eventually, you feel the cat pull something out of you. Oh, <laughs> what? A small doll that looks very, very familiar. It's hard to tell, but that doll is, that's you. Oh, that's me. Isn't it? Is, is that what you prefer, kitty? When you want a stuffed toy, is that what you prefer? The cat hops off of you and heads back to the box with its prize. At least you think so. Everything's too dark to tell. At least you're happy. You wake up and find that you can't move an inch. You can't look around. You can't even breathe. Oh, is that me? I'm now the doll? Though none of those realizations seem to be a problem. All you can see is the face of a familiar looking cat curled around you, purring in its sleep. Wow. For some reason, this doesn't bother you. You're not sure why you feel like it should. You try to latch on to thoughts in your head that feels like memories of another life, another time, another you. But the thoughts slip away like forgotten dreams. Nah, I'm just gonna be living as a doll, I guess, guys. Oh well, that's fine, isn't it? You're just a doll, after all. And a doll's role isn't to have silly thoughts or to remember unimportant things, but to be a companion. And judging from the cat's contented purring, you seem to be performing your role perfectly. You're filled with an overwhelming, strong sense of pride at this fact. And so you too feel content. Landing 35, cotton headed. Oh, and you can't skip now. You've been enjoying yourself, haven't you? Oh, I think I did get all the endings. Yes, I as well. Still, all good things must come to an end, and I believe you are ready. Ooh, creepy. <laughs> oh, this has been so enjoyable so far, guys. And let's let's go ahead and finish this up. I am ready. I think I've seen everything I gotta see. Let's go ahead and finish this up. Only one thing left. So, what should you do with a cat that has been very, very, very naughty? Oh, hint. No, no, no. I got it. Uh, oh, no, is it gonna say kill? Don't say kill. Kill it! Oh my gosh, it's here. Okay, guys, let's just go ahead and do it. Ooh, really? Are you sure? Maybe not? Dot, dot, dot. Oh, you have no choice. There's no other, there's nothing else you can do but just to do it. There's nothing else you can do but just to do it, yes. <sighs> Once you do this, you won't be able to turn back. I don't want to! Oh my gosh, let's do it! We came all this way, guys! We gotta do it! Last chance. Are you really, really sure about this? This is the point of no return. Are you sure there's nothing else you wish to do? I bet even if I try to save it, it won't do a thing. So, I'm gonna go ahead and just do it. <sighs> of course, the, of course the cat's gonna be resistant! Of course! I don't know, I did not expect it. But, of course. I did it though? I didn't think I would do it! I didn't think I would do it! 
I thought they can't put up more of a fight than that. His corpse lay limp and lifeless in its now blood-stained cardboard box. What would you like to do? Do I still have an option? I still got an option? Okay, let's check our pockets. There's no point, the cat is dead. You dig in your pockets anyways. Left pocket, string, useless. Right pocket, chocolate! You eat the chocolates. <laughs> you have your phone. Take a picture? No point. The cat is dead. What would you like to do? Let, 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 let's look around. What are you looking for? The cat is dead. You look anyways. You look to your left and your right. Nothing but trash. You look up. The sun never reaches in here well enough, but you can tell that it's a beautiful day today. You look behind you. Nobody saw. You look down in front of you. Oh yeah, the cat is dead. What would you like to do? Leave. You're done here. You turn around and leave the alley. Huh? At least you try to. As you stand at the edge of the alley's entrance, you see that nothing exists beyond it. Just an empty black void. You turn back. Cat alive? The kitty alive? I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing. And see that the back of the alley has become shrouded in darkness. You can't see a thing. Leave the alley? But there's nothing there. I guess there's no more choices, guys. There's no more choices. Let's approach the darkness. With no other option, you step forward in the darkness. Closer. Closer. And closer! Come closer! Slash your- your bleed! Oh my gosh! You know, this is like it! Like it! Okay, the cat is like, really? But then again, that's what the cat get too, so like... Please, can we stop? Can we be civil about this? Am I dead? Oh, don't tell me I'm dead. Did I die? I did lose a lot of blood. Da da da. You collapse your knees. The front of your body is slashed open, leaking blood and guts and organs down your torso and over your lap. Don't you know that cats have nine lives? True! True! What? <laughs> it's like, what? What'd you say? Pop! <laughs> Just slash it. Just slash it. I mean, by that logic, I probably got like affinity lives because why do I keep coming back alive? Oh, any 36? Eight more lives? <laughs> Creepy! Creepy! Yeah, so I'm guessing eight more lives. Well, that's one down. Good luck on the rest. So I'm guessing that's the rest of the endings. Okay, let's go. It's game time. Go ahead, come at me. I'm ready, I'm ready. Gonna pop, pop, pop nine times, you know, guys? I never believed in unconditional love. Not even as young as I was on the day that changed my life forever. Still, I always assumed that they would come the closest to granting it to me. It's what they always say, right? That a parent's love is unconditional? The wounds they inflicted on your skin and in my heart had long since scarred over the day they dealt the final blow. And all it took were two little words. What? Get out. Ah, I got some butt nugget parents, guys. The day they finally turned their back on me, abandoned me. Like the cat? That was the day it found me. Oh, that's when it found you. It offered me an unfathomable kind of love. A love that could be limitless, endless, powerful, all-consuming. A love unmatched. A love unlike anything that could exist in this world. But there was one thing that the love it offered could never be. But unconditional. Because there's a condition to it. What's the condition? Must play with it forever? Dot, dot, dot. Huh? Where, where am I? And so, you find yourself here, yet again. Huh? What? Who said that? <laughs> and where is here? I can't see anything. Why? Here is here, silly. Huh? Y you Well, do you remember me this time? I never would have thought of myself as being forgettable. But I suppose there's the first time for everything. I feel like I'm over here giving them like this sophisticated voice. <laughs> Serious moment. Your memory slowly pieces together a fragment of a moment, an encounter, a cat in 
in an alley? I took you home with me, didn't I? Correct. You were daydreaming so long, you even had me worried. Can you imagine that? Here I am indulging a little in playing with my prey, only for you to completely zone out on me. The game's no fun if you're not present, you know? I... No, I, I don't know. I don't understand what's going on at all. Hmm, curious as you are, I should have expected that you have questions. Well, I suppose you put me in a good enough mood to be generous and hear you out. Very well. What would you like to know? Everything? What do you mean I was daydreaming? Hmm, it's the first thing that came to my mind, really. You were on the brink of death, but instead of watching your lifespan flash before your eyes, you got stuck reliving the moment we met, subconsciously, coming up with scenarios in which you managed to survive. Well, maybe you would have, but I couldn't resist messing with your imagination a little bit. <laughs> you did just start ignoring me out of nowhere, after all. You know by now how much I love attention. Your little thought experiments were rather amusing, but if I must say, you must have had a pretty dull life to forgo indulging in precious memories of bygone days in favor of daydreaming about a single encounter over and over and over again. I've heard of having regrets on one's deathbed, but this has been ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculously intriguing, that is. Or perhaps rather than in regrets, I was what you found intriguing. Am I still dreaming? You're lucid, I'll say, since you finally remembered me and all. Seems you're finally ready to end this farce, amusing as it has been. What would you like to know? Uh, where are we right now? Inside your head, silly. The real versions of ourselves are halted in time back in your reality, though I doubt much time has actually passed. These things tend to happen in the blink of an eye, after all. Well, usually, anyways. What would you like to know? Why do you keep killing me? Like, what's that about? Oh, don't be so dramatic. I don't keep killing you. I haven't even killed you once yet. Those were just thoughts and ideas floating around in your head that I admittedly had a little fun with. But can you blame me? I would have gotten bored just waiting for you to wake up. You even made me kill you. Oh yes, I suppose I was curious to see if you actually would. And you certainly didn't hold back. <laughs> you must have been quite angry with me. It's fine, though. You know what they say about curiosity, yes? It was my own choice, and besides, I got you back, didn't I? <laughs> what would you like to know? Oh my gosh, this cat's crazy! You're a cat! How are you talking? <laughs> what? What do you mean? I've been talking to you all along. Intriguing as your imagination is, it would have ran a wild without my help. I was guiding you the whole time. Huh? Oh, that's the cat saying that. Didn't you hear me in your thoughts? Like this. Oh, that was you? But you're a cat. How are you doing this? I'm quite powerful, yes, but also not so much. What does that mean? Besides, what makes you so sure I'm a cat? My appearance? I doubt I resemble any cats you've ever seen before, right? Then what the heck are you if you're not a cat? I didn't say I wasn't a cat, didn't I? Just playing these games! Uh! <laughs> oh, 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 don't do that. I could be a demon, or a god, or an alien from another galaxy, or an interdimensional abomination, or I could just be a cat. It doesn't really matter what I am, does it? Certainly what I can do would be a more pressing matter, yes? A real cat couldn't have done all of this. You're really hung up on an appearance, aren't you? Do you have some kind of proof that cats don't possess powers like mine? I doubt it. And you know, it's pretty rude of you to keep going on and on about what I am before you even ask who I am or what my name is. <sighs> okay then, what's your name? Well, I'm not going to tell you now. <laughs> You're so petty! Learn some manners first and we'll see. Well, maybe in your next life anyways. What would you like to know? Uh, what do you want? Hmm? Well, if you're talking about my original goals, those are a bit personal, I'll say. And anyways, things have changed. Right now? Well, presently, I'd like to have some more fun with you. 
Your company has been very entertaining thus far. Given much more time, and under different circumstances, perhaps we could have been... Mm, well, all good things must come to an end. You can't truly want to spend what little time you have left in regret and delusion, right? Alternately, I'm quite hungry after waiting so long for you to wake up. At this point, I can go either way. Have I satisfied your curiosity now? Mm, I just have one more question. Why me? Why call out to me of all people? All I did was call out for someone to hear me. I called out and you were the first person who came to me. Simple as that. Mm. Were you hoping for some special reason? Mm. I'm afraid I don't have one. Everything I come to like about you were things discovered after our initial encounter. So there's no big reason for any of this. The reason is far less interesting than the results that came about from our interaction. I only came to satiate my hunger, but in doing so, I found something far more valuable. I know for a fact that regardless of how this plays out, I will never forget you. What do you mean? I've taken a liking to you, human, and so I'll grant you another chance. Another choice. What? It's my choice. Huh? This place is... You remember this place? Oh, the beginning of this entire gameplay! Being chased. Oh yeah, being hunted. Being afraid. Oh, so this entire time, ever since the very beginning of this game, to now, all those different endings, was literally just me being in a daydream type state. Wow. Being afraid. So afraid. That fear that so attracted me to you. That instinctive desperation to survive, I crave it all. As I am the origin of those delectable emotions, you are already mine. But I will still permit you the chance to accept the re reality of your fate. Human, join me or perish. I'll join you! I'd rather die! Can I save here? I wonder if they'll let me come back. I'll join you. Let's do it. Let's join the kitty and see what happens if you join them. What you think, kitty? Splendid. Come forward, my human. <laughs> my human. You step forward and pick up the cat. You cradle it in your arms, creating, reaching up to scratch his head. <laughs> That's all it wanted. Is this my life now, guys? This is my life now. The cat lady. Suddenly. What? You start to feel sleepy? But the sudden wave of fatigue doesn't cause you to sway at your feet or stumble at all. What? what what's happening? Shh. Don't worry, you no longer need to worry about anything anymore. Just sleep and dream those sweet, sweet dreams for me. Okay, I shall. Excellent. With this, you will soon become a part of me. Okay, nice. Ending- <laughs> 37 forever! Forever, Nina. Just as it should be! <laughs> okay, wait, let's see if we continue. Back again, are you? You already reached the best outcome you're going to get. What more are you hoping to achieve? Mm. You wouldn't be thinking going back on your promise to join me, right? Have I not yet satisfied your curiosity? No! No? Well, in that case, what would you like to know? Um, nothing. I don't care. Really? Perhaps you're not as curious as I thought. Still, let's go ahead and get back to the moment and let's say I'd rather die! Dot, dot, dot. I see. Then there's nothing left to say. How are you gonna kill me? Resign to your fate. You finally turn around. Oh. So this is like the true ending, technically. Of the beginning part. There's probably a third, another ending where I can... We can both be amazing. Or I can live. I think there's a third ending where I live, probably. But this one... Nope. It's enormous. Shapeless billowing like thick smoke in the wind this shadow like entity towers above you so high it looks like the sky poured it down to earth is still pouring it even it is unfathomable that your tiny world is even able to stand under the weight of the reality of such a being's existence and that you and your fragile mind haven't fallen to ruin as well you step forward into the monstrous miasma Oh, I love the little animation. 
and offer yourself to it. Ooh. Yep, there I go. There I go, eaten away. Lovely. Darkness. Surrounded by pure and absolute darkness, you are very subtly hit with the feeling. What? That you are not alone. Like you've been stepped into an unbearably, impossibly crowded space. Your ears even start to ring with the sensation of countless conversations. Words. Whispers. Screams. All overlapping. But you don't actually see or hear anything or anyone. You're alone. Even as your senses lie to you, trying to make you think otherwise, you're more alone than you've ever been. Oh my gosh! Lies. I wonder what all that means. Lies. Lies. Listen. Listen. Please. Huh? Is someone really- I, I can't see you. Where are you? <gasps> okay, so coming back to the little eye thingy. Nothing. Nothing left. To see. Only hear. Hear us. Yes? Listen. Please. Are you- Are you all trapped too in this place? No place. Us. All of you. See. Hear. Feel. Is us. Us. And it. We are victims. Pray. Like you. We are many beyond counting. Our bodies gone with time. Wills left behind. Us. Us. We became what you see. This place is us. Need you. Need your help. Help. But what can I do? It's too greedy. Make mistake, ate too many. We are many, now strong. We are strong. Hey, let's go. Let's cause a revolution. Made it strong, but make mistake. Mistake, error, flaw. Weakness. Then why not escape yourself? Too long here. Too long. One. We are one. With it. Bodies. Lost. Minds. Wills. Us. All corrupted. Nobody can escape. You two. You. We. It. One. All of us. All now. One. But you. New. Flesh. Fresh. Body. Still have body. Escape is possible. Because still one with it. Even just you, if escape with mine, with body. It will unravel. Lose power, lose strength, lose us. Us. Set free forever. Forever, Nina. Finally, escape. Help. How do I do that? Remember, it lies. Hidden in truths. Lies. Lies. Escape. Push forward. It lies. Persist. 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 Let's persist, guys! Let's do it! You will not break my soul! You ignore their words. What? Oh, deep down you know there's no way someone like you could win against something like it. Is this, is this it talking in my head again? The cat. Trying- Oh my gosh. Useless. A pointless effort. The hopes of those words, their will, it will all be wasted on you. It lies! It lies! So, you accept your fate and choose to perish. No. You're not gonna lie to me. You're not sure how long it takes, but their pathetic pleas eventually grow silent. You almost wish they would have simply turned to insult and threats. This endless silence, it bears the weight of your guilt and shame long after your body fades away and becomes one, one with me. Ending question mark, perish the thought. No! I refuse! Yeah! This, this, is, this, this is another daydream, isn't it? You're lucid again? In here? But how did you... Well... When you've been dreaming about the same day over and over, you kind of start to notice the patterns. Listen, I'm nothing special. I don't really have any friends. I don't like crowds or going out most of the time. And more often than not, I'm alone. 
Why is this Loki describing me? <laughs> Even in my home, one bedroom, one bathroom, and one me living alone in it. It'll be easy to say that I don't have much to lose. My life is admittedly pretty boring, but it is my life. And if this is my dream, then you're not calling the shots anymore, buddy. Ooh, yes, Nina, take a stand. I don't think you understand what's going on here. No, you're the one that isn't getting it. You called me. You're the one who needs me. Whether it's to eat me or kill me or make me yours forever, it doesn't matter. I'm done here. I'm going home. Ooh, he mad, he's mad. You forget yourself, human. You, ungrateful little creature. I give you my patience, my attention, my love, and you think you can just leave? I didn't have to, you know. I could have just eaten you whenever I liked, but instead, I gave you time to understand, time to accept what was happening. I gave you a choice, you. An unremarkable little nothing of an existence who no one would ever notice was missing if I've just taken you as I pleased. He lies, guys! Remember, he lies! Every life is precious. Dreaming away about endless possibilities. Never having to worry about permanent consequences ever again about choosing wrong. A little world all on your own inside your head. I offer it all to you. I gave you the choice to join me and have it all and you refused. You said you'd rather die, didn't you? And yet here you are trying to go back on your choices, only to continue to reject me, to reject my love. So foolish, so ungrateful, just like the others. You don't even know what you want. Another bundle of contradictions. You wish for solitude, yet you fear being alone. You fear being forgotten and desired unloved. It's even I, though I love you and desire you, even though I promise to never forget you, even though I am the only one willing to never leave you, you still reject me. Stupid little child, I'm done waiting. You do not get a second chance. You made your choice and you will accept the consequences of that choice. You are going to stay here for the rest of these ingrates. Oh, with the rest of these ingrates. For ever, Nina. Da da da. Haven't you ever heard of changing your mind? Yeah! change their mind all the time i do that every day do you think yourself so important that you are above facing the truth of that reality no but that doesn't mean i can't do my best to make things right as long as i'm here i can still make more choices the game's not over yet you gave yourself to me you are already a part of me this might be your pathetic little delusion but don't forget that i'm the one in control here human oh yeah that's right those twisted choices in my dreams were all you, weren't they? We help. Oh, sorry, that's the other people. We help, help, running, and dream.exe. Oh, so it was them! What? Perish. <gasps> what are you doing, you useless traitors? Stop! I think it's about time I started making my own choices. Persist! Stop! Or perish. Was it perish or persist? Either way, he's out of here. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I make my own choices. Huh? I'm back in the alley. It's not here. Good. I think, I think I need to get home. I, uh, I step forward out of the alley. This is gonna take some getting used to. I, I step forward out of the, I like how this time now I'm narrating myself. I'm guess before the, the, the cat was narrating everything. But now it's like, I, I step forward out of the entry of the thankfully empty alley. I'm almost out of this place. Almost, oh, when suddenly, no, 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 no. You, you're not going anywhere. Oh, 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 I, I don't, I, go, go left? Oh my gosh. Don't give in to it. Stay determined, Nina! I need to dodge away from it. Okay, so away from it. So what does that mean? If it's, go back? Oh, gotcha, oh, gotcha. Go home. Whoo, dang it, it's overrode, it overrode my choice. Where the heck do I go? Oh, oh, um, dog part? I have to escape? And where are you but here? Oh, oh, okay, go back. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. And then go back. Okay, so if he's in front of- Oh my gosh, the dogs! Okay, uh, uh, left, left. Let's go, and then right, right, right? Yeah, right. Oh 
my gosh, no! Go to the right. Yes. Oh my gosh, the dogs. Go to the right. Let's go. I'm guessing. Dang it, gotta escape. Get up. Get got you now. Okay, what? Uh, he's on the he's on the right. So go to the left. Uh, right. I mean, go to the right. Go to the right. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Go to the left. To the left. To the left. Ooh, go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Get back here. Oh, now we're going to the carnival. I guess we're going to every single place. Right? Get back here. Here we go. There we go, guys. We did it. Did, did I do it? Threads unraveled. Many us escape. Many free now. It losing us. Losing strength. Your escape. Possible now. No! You are mine! We go ahead. We go free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you too, all of you. I won't forget you. They were right, my choice is back. Let's go home! Let's finally go home! No! Oh my gosh. Right? Oh, it's, it's harder to see. Left. Okay. Come back! Back, back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Um, 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 right? Nice, nice, nice. Come, oh, now I'm going back to his cat voice. Which way is it? Uh, uh, left. Okay, which way? Which way? Right, 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 right! Ooh, don't leave me! Oh, which way, which way, which way? Which way, which way? Le left! I'll die without you! Oh, he's making me feel bad. He's making me feel bad. I'll die! Which way is it? Which way is it? Right! I'll die! Push forward. Freak you, man! I'm free! Wait! Ooh, wait. What? I'm back here? I'm back? But where it all begin? The alley? And then the cardboard box at the back of the alley? There you are. You look nothing like the impossibly cute cat I met. Well, what feels like a lifetime ago, after escaping a Releasing the wills of all your victim, all that's left of you now is an inky black blob seething up at me. The endless hatred pouring out of your singular eye doesn't scare me at all. Do not take this cat home. The only logical answer. Don't leave your mind. No, I'm not. I'm nobody's. You took them away. They were all mine. And now they're gone. You took them away. You took everything from me. They weren't yours either. Alone. Hmm? You never had to be. If you were lonely, you could have been their friend. But you didn't want friendship. They left because you tricked them, kidnapped them, hurt them. You stole their lives, their time, never to get any of it back. You brought this on yourself. Do not take this cat home. You are perfect. I'm not. You are. Don't need the others. Just need you. Stay with me. I won't. Can give you anything. Can be anything for you. No, you can't. You couldn't even before. You definitely can't now. And even if you could give me any everything I ever wanted and more, you still never stay. Or I'll still never stay. Don't take this cat home! I love you. <laughs> I'm throwing out all the punches now, guys. No, you. I do. So much. I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Stop! Maybe you do love me in some strange, messed up way I'll never understand. But even if that's the case, it's not enough. This is toxic right here. Please, don't go. I'll be good. I don't believe you. I promise. I can't trust you. I promise. Just don't leave. Don't leave me alone. Please, I'll die without you. Ah! You know I'm a nice person! Do not take this cat home. I hate you. Now you want to be- You're so toxic! No, yeah, yeah, good thing we're not taking it home. Now that, I can believe. There's nothing left to say. Yeah. Even in the end, I felt sorry for it for some reason. Ah, oh, but the nightmare is finally over, guys. I watched in silence as the cat, as it fades away into nothingness.
Goodbye. With one last glance around the alley, I turn. And I'm free. Free, guys. And I leave. I leave. Ending 38. Do not take the cat home. Dot, dot, dot. Woo! We did it! Today's been surprising. Yeah. Pleasantly so. A day off that started with admittedly um, bad weather led me to the old theater. Where I enjoyed a movie by myself. My laughter filled up the empty theater. The rain had stopped by the time the movie was over. And I was in such a good mood I hopped over to the not so new cinema. Not to watch another movie. But to play around in the arcade earning a few high scores. With the gamer in me awakened, I went to the carnival and played some more. I love this! And was humbled fairly quickly. But I did manage to win a small stuffed animal at the ring toss booth. The design is questionable. And I freaking love it! Oh, this is cute. The rides weren't so bad either. I got inducted into a group for a while while waiting in line at the... Ferris wheel, bonding over our shared mistrust of the carnival's <laughs> game vendors, and even shared a carriage on the Ferris wheel with a few of them, and exchanged numbers before we parted ways. Aww! I don't know if I'll ever see them again, or if any of them would ever call me, or if even have it in me to call any of them, but having the option to do so is nice. I feel nice. Baby steps. After all, even that tiny bit of interaction, Though fun, exhausted me. Life of an introvert, guys, I'm telling ya. So I went to recharge at the dog park, feeling rejuvenated at the sight of dogs. Old, young, big, and small. All running around. Oh, happy and carefree. Aw, a few of the owners even let me take pictures. Yeah, today was a good day. So cute. I don't think about the cat or it, I guess, all that much these days. It was hard at first, in the immediate days and weeks that followed. What happened to me was all I could think about. There were days I blamed myself, days I questioned my choices. I went back to the alley more times than I would like to admit. The feeling that always went through me at the sight of that empty cardboard box was so indescribable, so overwhelming. I'll sometimes break down and cry right where I stood. It took a while, but eventually that strange emotion being clearer and clearer until I had the courage to recognize it for what it was. Relief. I've been afraid to feel it for so long, terrified to let my guard down, but that sense of relief finally returned. Relief that it was gone. Relief that I was free to live my life. However simply or extraordinary I wished, the ones it had imprisoned, I never heard their voices again either, but that's for the best. Living here and now, never forgetting what they did for me and what I did for them too. For now, I think that's enough, at least I hope so. And that wherever they are, they're finally at peace. I'm fighting for my own peace too. One day at a time, one tomorrow after another. Finally, I headed home to my little apartment. One bedroom, one bathroom, and one me living alone in it. Dot dot dot. Well, almost anyways. I'm home, baby! Oh! Oh, little kitten flails as it awkwardly runs around and kneels up at me. Oh, that's so cute! I kneel down, looking fondly at its hazel green eyes. Not that blue, not that, not that yellow one, guys! Green! Poor thing had been hurt and starving when I found it a few weeks ago. But it certainly got its energy back after a little food and care. Did you miss me? <laughs> Hungry, huh? Me too. It's been a long day. I smile helplessly at its cute little face. Let's find something to eat, okay? <laughs> and then we got a cute little cat at the end of the day too, guys. That's so cute. Well, I guess there is one more thing living in my home. And at least for now, I wouldn't have it any other way. Ending N.A. Another Day. I love this game. I feel like they had such a great message that it's like, even if you feel lonely or if you feel like basically not satisfied with how your life is going, it's fine because there's tomorrow's another day. If you feel like there's something that's happening and it's hard to like do it, as long as you take baby steps and just know that tomorrow's another day, I love it. 
I don't know. I feel like I can't articulate my thoughts right now because I've been like three hours of straight reading and I'm like kind of like mentally exhausted. But I know for one thing that this was such an amazing message and I loved it so much. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys thought about this. Oh, and this is how it ends, guys. Do not take it home. Wow. I love that. And we got all 40 endings, guys. It was a long run. It was a very long run that I honestly love so much, guys. This was just perfect. This was amazing. I love this so much. Anyways, that's gonna be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Nina, out.